Welcome to tonight's show. My name is Alexa. I'm your head of online community here at House Call Pro and your host for the Home Service Evening Update. I'm joined by my co-host, Roland, co-founder of House Call Pro, and Mel, who is our Senior Vice President of People. For the past 11 weeks, we've been sharing the state of the world according to the home service industry and focusing on one main topic and guest every evening at 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday for 11 weeks now. We have a big announcement to make tonight. It's very bittersweet, but an extremely exciting announcement. Our last live show will be this Thursday, June 4th. We're going to go out with a bang with our special guest, Simon Sinek. And after this week, we're going to be moving to an on-demand version of this show. We're going to be releasing one episode a week the mo starting the Monday after the 4th of July. In the meantime, we're going to be participating in the Home Service Super Summer, which Roland will be talking about shortly, and doing reruns of past shows. I promise you we are not leaving you. We are just readjusting the, form, the format of this show so we can continue to bring you really great content and guests. And Mel, do you want to share your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, this started, what is this, week 12? Um, I did the first live from our office. We had sent all the rest of our employees home, and I, I stayed back for a day or two to get things settled, and we did our first broadcast from there. And, and I think that we've, we've, we've grown so much in that time. It went from just first, what do I do with coronavirus? How do I file for this and apply for that? And, and can I work or not work? And it's really evolved to inspiration and community and actionable you know, tips of leadership. I mean, we've had so many incredible guests on the show and we want to keep doing that, but we're, we're moving from just being a coronavirus evening update to being your, you know, lifeline for being better, being a better you, running a better business um, and being accessible to anything that's going on in the world. So not just to this unique time frame. but I, I think we've all realized that as the, the, as the world is opening up a little bit, we're not all trapped in our homes every single night anymore. And so coming to you live at five o'clock Monday through Thursday, what used to be even Monday through Friday at the beginning uh, is, is probably run a, a bit of its course. Although um, I will be uh, missing, you know, shooing my kids out of the house every evening and, you know, putting on a little lipstick before five o'clock and, and just enjoying spending this time with all of you, but we remain and house call pro remains and I will remain and participating in any way that I can be useful to the community and continuing to bring you really great guests and advice and camaraderie. So we are going to continue to do that. And it's a really fantastic week. Um, but I know we could just not be more grateful than to have been in your homes um, for these past three months. I mean, it's sort of an incredible thing we've all been through together, I feel. So mm -hmm. I'm just honored to, to have been here through this. And I am uh, honored to continue going forward. So very excited. Yeah, I feel like one thing that is inevitable at any startup and even for a lot of our pros businesses is change. And so, you know, as we all go through the new normal, uh, we started, like Mel said, you know, and Alex said, the, the broadcast to kind of try to disseminate all the information that was just getting barraged at us um, and, and you guys and uh, definitely changed. Uh, towards inspiration, getting new ideas, having on great guests in the industry, having on great guests uh, in different industries like the leadership industry. And so for us, we're going to continue on that path, um, which is going to be a different kind of a format. So we'll still do watch parties. Uh, this will give us actually more flexibility. So I always like to see the glass half full. This is going to give us way more flexibility to bring on guests when it's convenient for them and not just at five o'clock, which by the way, guys, if you've got East Coast guests that it's 8 p.m. and you know it becomes a bigger ask so uh this will allow us to bring on more guests really get the valuable nuggets and then also kind of continue on our mission to giving back to you guys a uh, place of community for you guys to discuss share swap ideas see each mm -hmm. other still we're going to keep the groups open we're going to keep pushing mm -hmm. this stuff out but it's been a blast and we're going to kind of continue with these guests we're going to keep uh, educating you guys. We've got some really cool stuff planned for today. Uh, and then at the same time too, we've got a, a really cool new conference that's coming up and that's going to be next week. Uh, it's called the Home Service Super Summit. We're going to be getting a Guinness World Book of Records. So we're going to be shooting for the largest virtual conference online um, ever in the home service space. So we're shooting for 40,000 home service pros. So it's a huge, huge goal. 
we're totally going to hit it. Everyone that participates is going to get a certificate mailed to them. So that way you can use that on your website. You can use that on your truck. You can put it in your office. It's really, really cool. It's called the Home Service Super Summit. I'm going to be speaking myself. Brooks is also going to be speaking on, on sales and leadership. Mm-hmm. And then we've got 40 other amazing guests. So it's like this, but jam-packed across four days. So it's going to be super fun. All of you guys, if you're interested in it, um, just go to homeservicesupersummit.com. The tickets are free. There's no cost for it. So the tickets are free. You should definitely all go. We're going to drop that link, guys, for you guys here in the chat. looks like Ben already did it. We'll also do it on Facebook for you all. But I hope to see you guys all there. And we're going to continue being involved with stuff that hopefully gives you guys a lot of information, a lot of education, a lot of inspiration. And I have one other thing to add on all that. I don't know if everyone that has tuned in all these nights or maybe just a few nights realized that the guests that we've brought to you have done this of their own just generous service to you, the small businesses, to the home services. So we don't call them and say, hey, how much would it cost for you to come and, and talk with us? We say, hey, we're doing this public service for not just our customers, but for small businesses everywhere. And we think this is really important. And would you be willing to come and talk with us um, and we're not offering anything, we're not offering, you know, marketing or, or dollars or we're just offering them a chance to speak to people who are out there making a difference in the world and that's all of you. And look at all the people that have said yes, it's just incredible. So it's really a testament to the, the work that all of you do in your communities because they're not showing up for us not at all. Um, there's been one or two personal favors in there, but in, yeah. but they're showing up for you. You know, they're showing up for the work that you do out in the community. So this this whole show and the transition to having guests would never have been possible without you as the audience, and you're the ones that they're coming here for. Absolutely. So that being said, you guys, we're still going to involve you in this whole process, how we're posting all the time saying like, oh, we're going to have this guest on what questions do you have? We might do some shows where you have the opportunity to tune in live so we can get your questions answered live. But we, this audience, like obviously Roland, Mel, and myself, we love you guys. We've been hanging out now for three months. This is by no means the end. And I don't want you guys to think, oh, just because they're going off this live structure, it's not going to be the same. It's just going to be different. You're going to have better edits on it. We're going to have segments. Like we have so much fun, great, really informational and inspirational stuff planned for you guys. So if there's anyone that you want to see on this show, let us know in the Facebook group so we can dedicate our resources to trying to get them on there. So we, um, yeah, well, we'll keep announcing it throughout the week. We know we have like a big group of you guys that are with us every night and we plan on keeping you guys extremely involved in everything that we're doing, especially in our community. Like we, this whole thing would be nothing without you guys showing up every night. So hopefully it gives you some time back in your day and we can just focus on providing you really high quality content with high quality guests and you will still be involved in it. Um, it will just be on a more weekly basis instead of every every day as the world starts opening up again. All right? So that was really tough for us. We've been like dreading <laughs> saying this for, for a while. Um, and if you have any questions you wanna reach out to Mel, Roland, or myself, we're more than happy to answer them for you. But we wanted to let you guys know first and to just be expecting that at the end of this week for the big change. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Mel for our state of the world. And then we're going to be talking all things Instagram marketing. And based off the answers today, it looks like not a lot of people know about this. And that's totally fine. We are going to cover it. So over to Mel for the state of the world. Great. Great. And I'll just jump right into your evening update. Today is Monday, June 1st, 2020. Can hardly believe it. Um, So looking at the Johns Hopkins dashboard, which we have been taking you to every night, and you can visit every day if you're just a you know, getting a lot out of watching how this is progressing. Um, We have reached over 6 million confirmed cases globally. We're at almost 375,000 deaths and we're at almost 2.7 million recovered. Um, So here in the U.S., we are at about 1.8 million U.S. cases. I can remember when it was in the hundreds. (laughs) Um, So certainly been um, quite the journey together on these dates and um, on this occurrence. So there's the, the, the deaths in the U.S. Unfortunately, 105,000 folks have lost the battle. And we're at almost half a million recovered um, in the U.S., so getting, getting closer. 
So one interesting piece of news that came out of the, the Centers for Disease Control was a new published study um, that's taking a look at when community transmission may have started to happen in the U.S. We had previously identified that in late February, actually here in California, Northern California. And now there's there's some new um, data that shows that it may have begun as early as January. So they did some genetic analysis and went back and did case investigations from folks who had had been ill or who had, had um, passed away during that time and actually gone back to do the necessary tests to see if any of those were related to, to COVID-19. Um, so that's certainly an interesting fact. There's even been uh, you know, articles written that the potential number of cases is higher than we think because there's so many that we don't know about and the same with the number of deaths. So we can definitely expect that they'll continue to research that on the, the, the CDC side. Um, over the weekend, I'm sure many of you were impacted by historic protests um, against racial injustice and police brutality. So these have drawn crowds in cities across the U.S numbered in the thousands in some places. So, you know, as we speak, there's a curfew in effect tonight in Washington, D.C. There have been curfews across the country over the past few days, including right here in my small, quiet San Diego suburb last night, we had an 8 p.m. curfew. So why this is related to this conversation is that the large scale events have raised concern regarding the associated risk of increased community transmission of coronavirus. So mass gatherings of any sort, including these protests, and recent Memorial Day weekend celebrations, which I know lots of us saw video of some of the really um, crowded Memorial Day gatherings. So those sorts of things, you know, the health officials are still warning us can create conditions that can facilitate COVID-19 transmission. So health officials are closely monitoring new cases in order to quickly identify if there's any indication of increased community transmission where there have been these larger gatherings. So we're also seeing that they're publishing tips and guidance for reducing transmission risk during protests. So there's also been multiple reports of masks and hand sanitizer and other materials being distributed to protesters. And I know because I, I, I saw it, I heard it, I heard from so many of you um, over the weekend on Facebook, this has certainly had an impact to many small businesses in cities and towns where these things are going on. So I know some of you in our audience tonight have also been impacted. So certainly our, our heart goes out to the whole situation um, and especially to those of you who have been personally impacted um, by any of the, the protests or any of the, you know, the curfews and things that have impacted your lives and businesses and families. So thinking of all of you. And it is Monday. And Monday means the trades for the health trades health index. index. Yes. yes. Right. Yep. Tell us what's going on, Roland. All right, so this is really fun. I always get to like pull this up and look and like, hey, how are we doing? How are we doing, guys? Let's go back to here. Hold on one sec. And we'll continue to update this, you guys. We'll continue to do updates every Monday on our Trades Health Index. Yep, we will. So, all right, this is really amazing to see. The red line is above the blue line for the first time. So for those of you just tuning in for the first time, 2019 is blue, 2020 is red. So what this means is that for the first time, the leading indicator, the red is above where we were in 2019. So this is a very, very good sign. This is across all trades, across all states. And you can see that average completed jobs per week, just about right on point for the first time. So it's off by like, what is that? Half a percent. So this is great news. If you guys want to jump in here and actually take a look at your particular trade. You can do that very easily. You can go into things like heating and air conditioning. You can see it definitely spiky, but you can see already HVAC is turning up as the heat is going on as well. So there's some more information on here as well. If you want to jump in, look at different cancellations, canceled cancellations since week six. Um, so you can really dive in here, but the key ones to take a look at are these ones, which is the leading and the trailing indicator. So this is the Trades Health Index, and we'll post this link. So if you guys want to peruse and browse around and take a look for your state and your, your industry, you can absolutely do that as long as we've got the data for you guys. But this is great news, and it's really amazing to see. I, I never knew when we started this, uh, at what point would that line cross in 2020 would be above 2019. So this is the week, and I almost feel like it's fitting that we end on this high note. <laughs> absolutely. I'm happy to see that. And I know some of you are like, where's my industry? Why isn't it on there? The reason why we may not have your industry on there is because we might not have enough 
pros um, on the system with uh, like the, I don't know if there's a threshold Ron, for like data points of what we can have to, to build that, but it probably falls beneath that. So once we do get over that, we'll add it onto there probably. So thank you, Mel, for our state of the world. We will see you back here tomorrow. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll see you back here tomorrow. And I'm gonna bring Natalie on. Special Hi. guest. Special <laughs> guest who we like to con into doing lots of things with us. Yes, they do. So mm -hmm. welcome, Natalie. Natalie is on mine and Roland's team, and she is the doer of all the things, and she is a whiz at marketing. So today we are having her on and Roland and myself. We're going to be talking like Instagram Marketing 101, um, the basics of everything. We're going to get into a little bit about how to um, put some marketing dollars behind your spend, but really Instagram is a really amazing platform because you can grow your account and grow a following and get business and profits from it organically if you do it correctly and you commit to it. And the reason we wanted to talk about it with you guys is because I, I asked in the beginning, who here is doing any Instagram marketing? And I was seeing lots of people saying, I do Facebook marketing, I do um, uh, Nextdoor, Google, but I don't do Instagram. And I think that's extremely common for the home service space because it's, I, it's a different industry to be on there. Like you see a lot of um, like online stores on there. I would say like restaurants you would see on there too, but in other small businesses, but a lot of online stores. So you have the advantage now of really just trying to get some more knowledge about Instagram marketing, seeing how it would work for you um, and getting ahead of your competitors that way, because I follow plenty of small business accounts Past, besides the reason that they're a business I support, it's because of the stuff that they're posting is really, really valuable. So we'll talk about that tonight. So um, we're gonna kind of break it up into three steps here, just getting started. What do you need to know about setting up your Instagram account? Um, in the chat, can you put and address it to everyone? Say, yes, I do have a business Instagram or no, I do not have a business Instagram. So put that in the chat. So yep. we and you have to have a, a business profile. So you have to have mm -hmm. made the switch on Instagram. So that mm -hmm. one's really important. All right, let's see. Yeah, that's a common mis misperception there. So someone says the age demographic for people on Instagram don't own a house, no point. Um, so I would say I'm a very large consumer of all things Instagram and own a house and book lots of home service pros. Yep. So I You're feel like a lot of people say that. Mm -hmm. Your millennial customers are definitely on there. And now your Gen Zers who are starting to buy houses are, are on there too. Um, and also you have people like me who rent, but I suggest who I want to have my property management company book because of the, of the work that I know that they provide. They're all house call pro users. I'm always like, can we do this person instead? Um, and if they're not, I always take the opportunity to talk to the person that come to our house. So hopefully after this, we'll convince you a bit as to why you should be on there. Um, as we always say, just like with online booking, um, getting jobs with Instagram, it's another line in the water of you getting leads and it's a, it's a free platform and you have lots of uh, options to advertise yourself and it's tied with Facebook. So you really get that two for one on it. So Natalie, what is the first thing before getting started with my Instagram, before setting it up, what do I need to do? Um, the first thing is you want to create your goals. So figure out why you're on Instagram. So for most of you, you're going to have two goals. One is either going to be brand awareness um, but the other that's kind of tied in with that is if you want direct bookings. So um, that's probably likely the reason that you're going to be on that. So write down your goal. What are you looking for? Why do you want this Instagram account? And then that's kind of going to be your North Star for everything going forward. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Same thing with the email marketing that we talked about last week with Christy and Kendra. You can't have a successful strategy if you don't know what the goal is supposed to be and what you want to achieve at the end of it. So um, for, for a lot of businesses, one thing I like to suggest is you guys need to measure the amount of conversations that you're having and people that are booking on the link in your bio and on the business profile, you can also um, change the call to actions as well. So those are very simple things to measure 
So if you're setting your goals and objectives, those are things that you can, if you're using House Call Pro, you can tag it in your account as coming from Instagram. So yeah. as long as you're doing that, you're able to measure improvement because if you're not doing that, you can't measure to your goals or objectives. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll talk a bit about Instagram analytics, but they're very simple and straightforward like, um, like Facebook. And then we'll also share some tools. Some are free, some are paid that you can measure the analytics on it yourself. So um, setting up your account after you've defined your goals, uh, obviously your profile is the first important thing because that's the first thing people see. You have your picture there, which should be your logo, a clean logo. Try not to have too many words squished inside of it. Um, something that I also, a common mistake I see with businesses and home service businesses on Instagram is like they either blow up their logo too big and it's like you can't really tell what it is or you can use a picture of you and your guys in front of your truck, but make sure it's like centered. Um, just little details like that make a difference. And it's not that hard to do. Um, once you have done that, I think the most, so the second thing we would do, your bio. Um, it's 150 characters, but this, the biggest mistake I see on home service business Instagrams is just call and book us like HVAC company. I can tell that by looking at the name. I can tell that by looking at the photos. Um, your bio is a chance for you to stand out and look different. So I always suggest putting your company mission statement here, like a shortened version of it, of course, um, and like what your guarantee is and what sets you apart. Are you woman owned? Are you veteran owned? Are you family owned? Been in the community for X amount of years or like put the community that you serve in there. And another hack that I really like and not a lot of people do is you can put emojis in there. You know, Roland, Allie and I, we love our emojis because they stick out um, and there's a way to do it tastefully and not like all crazy like you see some other people doing yep um, and then also one quick thing too to add in the description is it's really important to say what your COVID-19 state is so are you do you have COVID-19 safety in place are you still open are you closed what does that look like so people can easily see if you're available to book that is such a good suggestion. And then the last thing we'll say here is make sure it's a business profile. You can do this in your setting. It's literally a flip of a switch and it'll ask you what type of business you are. Um, I don't, I think home services on there um, or small business, you can check it out, but that makes a difference in the types of um, CTAs and actions that you'll be able to achieve on your Instagram. And we'll be doing at the end of this, uh, Roland Nally and myself will ask you to put your Instagrams in there and we'll do like a live audit like we did with your Facebook pages. Yeah, if you guys want to do the live audit, go ahead and put your Instagram handle in the Q&A box down here and that'll enter you for us to go do a quick review of your Instagram profile. So go ahead and put that in Q&A. Um, the other thing to remember too, as you're building out your- In chat. In chat. In the in chat. chat. In chat. The other thing to remember as well is obviously there are people that uh, will also add all kinds of funky looking text into the bio. Um, my advice is don't do too much of that. But if you do want to do something to stand out, um, there are some easy ways to get those different characters to show up. Um, and I'll link a post in here if you guys want to go down that path. But emoji usage always gets a plus and just keep mm -hmm. it simple and clean. So if you want us to do a live audit of your, of your business Instagram uh, um, in a little bit, put it in the chat and we're gonna do a live. I'm gonna share my, my phone. Cool, Tom already put base short carpet cleaning. So far Tom is the only one who's gonna get his profile reviewed. So we've done the getting started part, setting up your account, setting your goals. Um, you need to do all this stuff before you start posting. Um, the next part is strategizing. All right, so you gotta have a strategy when you get into it. So obviously there's ways that you can influence the way that your page feels to someone when they're viewing it. So you could have a strategy of you're only showing before and afters. You can have a strategy of, hey, we're just showing behind the scenes. So maybe this is a behind the scenes kind of a theme to your Instagram account. Um, maybe you're going for just showing the work of your customers that, that you've been doing. So um, a lot of before and afters, for example. There's all kinds of different strategies that you can employ and there's either ones where you can just Side. Hey, I want to do like a mix of different things. And on a different day of each week, I post one of those different themes that allows you to have like five different themes that you're threading back and forth. Um, I'm sure many of you guys have seen the different types of 
um, Instagram accounts that will have a kind of a consistent look and feel. So they'll, they'll alternate colors in between posts. Um, there's all kinds of different ways that you can make it feel, but you really got to think, you know, what is your primary goal? What is your objective? Is it to get bookings? Is it to get calls? Is it a uh, way to potentially get your name out there so new employees can find you uh, because they like that? Um, so those are some things you should take into account when you're strategizing. Mm -hmm. Natalie, what are some things that you think uh, pros should be strategizing about? Uh, I think that like really figuring out what your goal is, kind of like mentioned at the beginning, is super important. But also noticing that when you're coming up with your strategy that kind of fits that goal is that when you look at those metrics too, is that you're going to get likes and people I saw in the chat are saying like, oh, I'm not getting a lot of activity. But you also have to notice that kind of what Roland said is that your feed is like, um, it's a brand, it's it's a booklet of like what you're about. So when people go and they view it, those page views matter too. So if you know, you're getting a few hundred page views every single month. That's something that you could track too and say, wow, people are looking at me. They're, they're saying what I'm about. And that is super important as well. So, um, yeah, when you're strategizing, strategizing too, you also want to make sure that you're planning out your posts. How many posts are you going to do a week? What time are they going to go out? Who, who on your team is going to post them? Is it going to be you? Are you going to have one of your office admins take that? How are you going to get pictures for it? Um, are you going to require that your text send, you know, five photos every week to a certain, to somewhere so that way you have a lot of content to post? Or maybe you even give your text the ability to um, go out on the field and do lives. Maybe you have tech takeovers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So. Tech takeover. That is so smart. Everyone copy that. Hashtag tech <laughs> I like takeover. it. Um, but yeah, just thinking about what posts are you going to do in advance instead of just getting there and saying, well, it's Tuesday. What am I going to post today? So. Mm -hmm. So two things from what Natalie and Roland said, in terms of like who's gonna do it, that's all part of the plan or a part of the strategy. There's a lot of tools, and I don't know Roland if we wanna share them now or at the end, um, where, cause it, like Instagram marketing, and I feel like why a lot of people don't do it is because you think you have to like be on Instagram all the time, be posting all the time, same thing with Facebook. And so you shy away from that and you go towards more paid ads um, and marketing on Google and things like that when there are free platforms out there that will, if you sit down for like an hour or two or have your office staff, have your um, marketing or yeah, have your office staff, maybe it's a family member, one of your kids, one of your grandkids, whatever, they all know how to use Instagram. Um, you can plan it out for up to a month. Um, we like when Natalie and I were doing it, we were trying to do like at least a week or two weeks um, where we would plan out the pictures we were posting, the call to actions and the the captions for it. Yeah. So um, yeah, we would plan out all that stuff. And then um, the other thing I wrote down, so the first thing Roland said is like, figure out what you want your feed about. I took an Instagram marketing course and the most valuable thing I learned on that when learning things just from my own personal Instagram is you want five categories on your feed. That is actually the magic number. My boyfriend is crumpling up chips in the background. Um, you want five things. Um, and let's say it's five things about me, five things I love. I, I love our pros. I love marketing. Um, I love travel. I love technology and community. So figure out what your five things are for your business. Um, some examples for you. Yes, you want to have your, your product and your services on there, but no one wants to go to a feed um, where it's just, I like deal today or like you or book us online today. No one wants that. I, there's probably a magic number there for like how many times you should post versus I think it's like 10 non selling things to one selling thing or like one booking thing. Um, and it's proven that posts that have faces get more likes. So yeah. if you are going to post something like post a picture of your text, you know, face, post a picture of like your people out in the field. So that way when a customer goes, they know that they can trust you. They see the face behind the brand. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, what Alex said is, is so yeah. true. Don't just post a bunch of text on all your posts. Mm -hmm. that's a great yeah a, that's a huge ca category I would think if you have employees um, the behind the scenes so that can be your employees on the job um, your office manager so that would be a challenge I would think to you guys write down five categories of things that your business is involved in I absolutely want everyone to have like community work or like partnerships and we'll talk a bit about that in a little bit about how you can boost your account and get more views and get more um people booking you through partnerships you can um do on instagram so 
just some things uh, to think about. I'm just like such a big fan of what Natalie said, the hashtag tech takeover, like tech Tuesday takeover, please steal that, use that. Um, yep. And people, people like repetition and people like we know obviously for this home service evening update, you know, Monday through Thursday, every night, 5 p.m. So when you're doing this, you can use the scheduling tools to be super consistent. You can make sure you slot a theme for each one of those days. Um, obviously assigning the right hashtag to that day so people can just become accustomed to those posts because this is really a brand building exercise. And if they follow you, they're gonna keep seeing those, those things. But speaking of hashtags, how do you find the right ones? Because I feel like some pages overdo it. Some don't do any of it. What's the right mix and how do you even tell well, hey, what is a hashtag, but what do you even stand to gain from it? Yeah, hashtags are really, really important because basically like boosting your posts for free. So whenever you use a hashtag, it's showing it to um, all other accounts who are following that hashtag. So if you look on Instagram and you were to type in hashtag HVAC life, you know, it'll tell you how many people are following that hashtag, how many posts are in that hashtag. And that's just Instagram's way of boosting these public posts because Instagram has all these magic algorithms behind the scenes. They know what you like, you know, big brother in the background. So they're showing your stuff to the right people when you use those hashtags. So it's also really important. There's going to be hashtags like HVAC, plumbing, or electric, those one words that are really saturated, meaning that tons of people are using them. And you kind of want to shy away from those and you want to use ones that are a little bit more specific in niche to what you're doing. So when you type in hashtag on Instagram, it'll kind of give you a number of how many people are using it. And you want to look for something between 100,000 and a million. Anything less than 100,000 posts, is you're not going to get enough viewers on. It won't be worth it. And anything over a million, it's too saturated. People won't really see it. And then in terms of quantity, you probably want to use about 10 hashtags, I would say. And then a good way to sneak them in is to comment on your own post and do like dot, dot, dot and then the hashtag, and that's kind of a way to kind of include them without people seeing them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put them on the post itself, or you can put it in the comments. So there's two ways to do it. And then the other thing too, which is similar to hashtags, but not a hashtag, is a location post. So mm -hmm. obviously you wanna make sure you're adding that in there because people, they often browse by, hey, what's this city or what's this yeah, beach absolutely. or what's this thing? And things mm -hmm. that are popular in those areas tend to pop up toward trending towards the top for those places. So it's mm -hmm. another way to get some free boost um, that's fairly easy to get to. So make sure you're always using location on those things because you'll find more people that are browsing local and neighborhood based things mm -hmm. just by that rather than just looking for, you know, hashtag HVAC. It's probably not, probably not a good, good use of time. Yeah. That's a really big one, especially since like a company like us, it's not going to benefit us when we say we posted it from San Diego because our pros are all over the country. But for your, for people like you, your customers are right in your, um, in your geographic area. That is such an easy win for you. Mm -hmm. And so take those two nuggets there. Like, I think the most important thing is using your location, using the cities that you service um, and putting those in your hashtags and your location. Um, there, you might be able to do some experimentation around like the combination of your city with the HVAC or whatever your industry is. But like Natalie said, just keep an eye out for the, how many posts there are on it. Um, and hashtags are tricky, um, but I think the biggest learn here is like, don't just do general ones. Don't just put them to put them because they might actually do more harm than good. And your location is key. And if you service multiple areas, make sure you're doing a rotation of those. So you're not just siloing yourself to one city, just the city that you may be located in. Yep. Um, quick tip, if you guys are doing this from your mobile phone and you find yourself doing combinations of hashtags over and over again, because you're trying to be consistent, um, you can use text replacement. So for example, um, when I was building my Instagram account for guide to drone, you guys can go look at it. Um, you'll see, I keep doing the same hashtags over and over again, but really it's just, if I do like um, hashtag, 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 it expands it into like all of them as quick post. So once you figure out what those ones are, obviously keep um, going back and making sure that those are still the relevant ones. So for example, for me, um, it was a drone. So it was like DJI Phantom 3, but now it's DJI Phantom 4. And you can see by how many people are posting, which ones to actually go for. Um, so that's a really quick way. So you don't have to type them in every single time, but don't use too many. I made that mistake. <laughs> don't use too many. What's, yeah, and you can follow Roland's um, guide, it's guide to drone, right? How many followers yep. do you have Roland on that? I don't know, like 30,000 something. 
Cool. Um, and I don't even post very much anymore. I feel like I need to get back to it, but um, but mm-hmm. it is a, a hobby. There's a fun account spelled, yeah, 31,000. Go follow it if you want. So moving on to our last steps, we have set our goals, we've set up our profile, and we've done some hardcore strategizing around what we want to post um, with our five categories and research some popular hashtags. Um, and there, Natalie, I don't know if we have any of those tools on hand or we can do like a quick Google search, but there's definitely some good um, hashtag generators out there. If you put in like the, the type of industry you're in and it comes up with some, adi- like the, it like pairs them with ones that would be fall within the same category. So there's lots of tools out there for you. So now it's time to implement and analyze. Uh, you are not going to have sec- success on Instagram if you do not um, do it consistently. And if you don't keep posting, no one wants to see you post like, oh, here's this really great behind the scenes picture of my tech. Here's this really great DIY um, thing that I can do at home. And then you just stop posting. Um, and this is goes for both posts and stories. It's very, very similar to Facebook. The two are interlinked um, and you can kill two birds in one stone by linking the two. It's a simple integration by linking your Facebook business page with your Instagram business page. So again, succeeding on Instagram, it all comes down to executing it, putting the right tools in place. There's plenty of free ones out there. Um, Nat- Natalie and I use plenty of free ones and I'm, Roland has some other examples too. So the first part of that is what are you sharing? The star is the visual content and we really suggest mixing it up between both photos, um, memes, you ha- and videos too. Um, and quotes. So quotes and memes I think would fall in the same, but if you can create or like find a meme that goes viral, people will follow your account. If you're posting like really funny things about plumbing, but also really helpful things about plumbing, those are two really good combinations of things that you should be posting. And where I suggest getting started here is what do you have already? What can you repurpose? So go back um, in your, in your, um, in your phones, in any of your past jobs and see if there's anything you can use of your guys to get you started. And um, there's another thing I was going to say for that. I forget. I forget. Um, Yeah. So just start searching your content and figure out what that is. Oh, my thing I remembered. Natalie makes a lot of really great Instagram uh, templates that you can use on Canva. This is another great way to make your feed super consistent. So you can actually upload your company colors. You can upload your logos and your icons and make your own really cool graphics. It's super cool when you become like a thought leader in your industry and community. It's a great way for you. We're going to talk about collaborations and partnerships right now. It's a great way for you to put both your logo and the other small business who you're pairing up with logo. If you're doing like a giveaway, um, things like that. So think about, think about the content that you're sharing. And then this is one that Roland is very, very good at. Um, You can probably tell if you are in our Facebook group, the same thing goes for Instagram. What is that? Sure. So you guys need to engage with influencers and your followers. So um, there are two separate ideas. So there might be influencers in your local area. Think mom groups, think local PTAs, think little leagues, think sports, think um, local chamber of commerce, those ones. These are people that are influential in your local area. And because you're a home service company, you want to make sure you're you're catering to them, you're talking to them, you're um, DMing them, direct messaging them. Um, oftentimes, what you want to also do is reach out to other local home service companies and do what's what's called like a DM group. You can have up to 15 people in those. And the reason why you want to do this is you want to start to drive engagement. That's why you're reaching out to these influencers. Now, the second thing that you need to do is as people are engaging with your content, you need to interact with them. The worst thing that you can do is make a post and don't interact, don't like any of the people that are following you when they're leaving you comments, when they're leaving you likes, those things. So make sure that you're following up on them, um, the very least leaving them a like, but ultimately it's really good to reply to them, especially at the early stages, because this is what starts building your loyal fan base and shows others that you're engaging with people that are engaging with your content. That's what you want. Ultimately, you're doing this to game the Instagram news feed, right? The algorithm, which is, who shows up first? So in a stream of tons of data, how does Instagram know to show yours above all others? Especially if you're trying to trend for a particular hashtag or a location, Instagram's gonna show the one that's the most engaging. So 
when you're looking at other influencers, one way that you can do this is there's um, a hack um, out there. But essentially, when you post something, you want as many people to comment, like, and engage with it at that particular time. So within this DM group, you can get up to 15 people to comment on it right away, uh, three, four, five words, et cetera. Um, make sure it's unique so they're not just copying, pasting. Make sure they're liking it, but you want it to happen really quickly within a short period of time. So Instagram goes, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This is a really good post. The people that are posting on your post matters a lot. So if they're highly influential themselves, Instagram knows, ooh, this is probably pretty good. So for example, if you can get Kim Kardashian, just kidding, you shouldn't do that. Well, maybe you could. Um, if you get her to like or comment uniquely on your post, Instagram's gonna be like, whoa, 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 she normally doesn't do that. That's probably a really good post. But if you get a whole bunch of people that have not a lot of likes, not a lot of followers doing it, and now all of a sudden they leave a one word comment thing, Instagram's gonna be like, eh, it's probably not that engagement and we don't even know who these other people are. So those are called engagement pods and uh, we can dive more into that, but mm -hmm. um, that's how you get started. That's a really good golden nugget of uh, just like you have this image of like what influencers are, but influencers are anyone who have any impact or influence in a community or over a group of people. So the chamber of commerce, um, any big businesses in your area, businesses that have been in your community for a really long time, that is a great strategic partnership to spin up. And the easiest place to start doing that is tagging each other and featuring each other on, on Instagram and on Facebook. Yep, especially if you're giving a lot first before you ask. So if you are liking their posts, you're commenting, you're reposting their posts on your story. And you know, a month, like they're gonna notice that. And then a month later, if you go back and you go, hey, like, can we do a collaborative partnership where maybe you would share some of my stuff? It's a much easier ask because you've already get you've already you know done the give, um, mm -hmm. so it's super important. Mm -hmm. Yep, and remember, like if you're being authentic, um, besides just gaming the algorithm, you'll get a lot further because it's pretty hard to do, and you have to come up with some really good content with some really good engagement out of the, out of the gate to make it work. So even if you start building solo over time, it's going to end up winning. Um, the other thing too, just to consider as you're doing this, if you're looking for likes on your stuff, you don't need to trade like for like, but go and engage with other people's posts. Ultimately, they're going to click back to your profile and be like, hey, who left that thoughtful comment? Or hey, who liked my post? Or hey, who who viewed and commented on my, um, my Instagram story versus just like a comment? So those are just organic ways that you can do it. And obviously it takes time, mm -hmm. um, but definitely worth it. And those are super viable because back in the day, or there might even be some around now, but there are all these tools that would automatically go and comment on tons and tons of posts because it's proven that when you comment on a post, people are going to be like, hey, who's this account when they click on it? So, I mean, just commenting like nice or awesome or like, or you could be more thoughtful too. It's super, super powerful. Um, and then real quick, oh, go ahead, Roland. No, go ahead. Uh, I was say just real quick to touch on uh, different partnerships you can do. This is definitely something that we could dive in, you know, so deep on, but uh, it is super important to note that there are some really easy partnerships you could do with even some of your fellow techs, first off. So like if you're someone who refers a lot of business to, you know, you're an HVAC guy, you refer business to, you know, the electricians, do a collaborative partnership where you go, hey, I'm going to post you on my Instagram. Can you post me? Can we do a giveaway where for whoever, um, you know, comments and tags two friends on this post, they're gonna get, you know, $50 off an electrician service and $50 off an HVAC service. That's a way for you to get more followers, for you to get in front of somebody else's audience, which is really, really huge. And that's the whole reason why partnerships are so important is that you're getting access to an entirely different audience that is not your own. So think about other businesses that, you know, work in your area. Maybe it's, you know, a local promotion. Father's Day is coming up. Maybe you wanna partner with a, um, Roland, what do you guys want on Father's Day? <laughs> what do you guys want? Non-father. <laughs> yeah, laser pointers, drones. That's just what Roland <laughs> wants. Or, um, Manscaped shavers. Yes. Um, but doing a partnership Superbar. with Mar Mario. Mario, who we had on Thursday. If you haven't watched that evening update, please go back and watch that. Super informative. He's watching with us tonight, and he says, "Peace and quiet." So that's hilarious. Maybe you get dad like some new headphones. Um, or maybe you or, like, there's a local, a local babysitting company and you say for every, you know, you collaborate with that. So um, yeah, 
Think of different collaborations you can do with different partnerships. The whole purpose of this is thinking about who you know in your local community uh, that you can gain access to their audience and then, you know, provide something that's mutually beneficial to both of you. Mm -hmm. And giveaways are pretty, like, it's the best way to get organic followers. They may or may not, it it, their level of intent of continuing to follow your, like, interest in what you're doing may vary. However, everything that I've ever done that my friends tag me in and they want to win something, I always follow and like it and I don't unfollow it because I'm on to the next thing and all of a sudden like it pops into my newsfeed. I'm like, oh wait, this is great. I'm, uh, what is this? And I go and rediscover it again. So that's a good example of a longer term strategy for getting people for like brand recognition. Um, so that is a great point there, Natalie. And giveaways are relatively cheap to do. Um, there are a lot of different resources online about how to um, how to correctly craft a giveaway. So all your I's are dotted, your T's are crossed, and you won't get into any trouble there. Um, those are going on all the time. And yeah, then, if you're doing any of those kind of content uh, contests, sometimes it's a little hard to track them. So there's a couple different tools here that I'll leave and post. Um, but there's Simpliers, which is pretty good. And then there's Comet Picker. Um, both of these ones will allow you to make it easier to run a comment giveaway. Um, if you're doing giveaways too, and the giveaway, for example, is like tag somebody in here to get $10 off their next cleaning or something like that, um, that is definitely a good way to get new people to your page um, and engage and pull people through there. Um, but make sure you use a tool to try to keep track of it because otherwise it can get a little, a little bit messy and a little bit time consuming. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely. And like, and, and a lot of you, giveaways are super, super powerful. And a lot of people aren't doing them because sometimes it can seem easy. Like, okay, you have, you know, a hundred bucks. Are you going to spend it on a giveaway? Or are you going to spend a hundred dollars on paid ads to try to get another lead? But there is um, a common phrase in the marketing world that really resonates with me that it goes, you can always go to the traffic store and buy more traffic, right? You can go to Google, you can go to Facebook, you can always buy more traffic. But like in the end, what really wins is community and having that base to go back because anyone can go, you know, and put millions of dollars into ads. But like, there's reasons why if that was, if it was that easy, then, you know, money would make every company win. But that really isn't the case at the end of the day. So when you do a giveaway, you're really investing in your following. And those followers aren't just going to be a one-time ad that's going to click you once and forget. They're going to be someone that's going to follow you and consistently see all of your posts, which is super, super powerful to have that captive audience. And if you do giveaways consistently and you're posting consistently, they're going to keep engaging with you and you're going to keep that loyalty from those customers. Boom. Mic drop. Um, that is, that's a really good quote, Natalie. And at the same time, like you guys know, we're, we're all about community. Like community is more important to me than like the product, because I know our engineers and our product team are going to build something great. But what really differentiates House Call Pro, and I think you guys can all agree with us, is the community aspect of it, both online and offline. And community doesn't happen overnight. And social media is a great place, especially right now, to start building your community, especially if you are a local brand and you have, you're trying to build your roots and in, into your community foundation, um, this is a really, really great place to start. And it's everything we've talked about right now, besides the giveaways are free. So we wanted to briefly talk about how to do some ad spend here. Natalie, can you share a bit about boosting Instagram posts? So boosting an Instagram post is just as easy as boosting a Facebook post. So it's pretty much the same process. Um, Instagram, you'll get to have the option to um, be in a story. So it can be something that someone sees in their stuff in your stories. It can be a post in a feed. And then Instagram has recently announced secretly that they're now going to allow you to have advertisements right before an Instagram TV live. So that's something new that they're going to be releasing soon. But right now, I think it's only with a few influencers. Mm -hmm. um, and What's really cool about Instagram, just kind of like on Facebook, is that you really get to go really local on those ads. So once you do have your feed, you have the option for someone who is viewing your ad to either go to your feed or to go um, straight to your booking link. Do you mm -hmm. have your booking link there? Choose if you want them to go to your website so they can book you, or do you just want followers? The price of the lead, those leads is going to be really different. So obviously you're going to pay a ton more to get someone to book your service right then, but it'll be a lot cheaper for you to, to if you're like just looking for followers to pay for that. 
Um, you can mess around with that, add different ad budget. It's also nice sometimes to boost a certain post. So if you're doing, you could boost your account or you could just boost one of your posts. So if you're doing, if you are doing a giveaway and you want more engagement on it, you know, you can quickly just throw like 10, 15 bucks behind it, set your location for the city that you're in and then help get more comments and likes on that post. That's a really great advantage to have because I mean, we, we run ads on Instagram, but for a company like ours with, with um, customers all over the place, it's really, really hard to target just one specific area um, to get the amount of reach that we want. But you guys, it, you can put a, like a fair amount, like not, not a substantial amount of money behind your advertising on both Facebook and Instagram and reach a lot more people because it's so hyper targeted. Um, to your local space. So that's, we can, we can talk more about that at another time. Maybe we'll do another whiteboard Wednesday and do like a walkthrough of how to set that up. Um, but the main point here is like, yes, you can do paid ads, but Instagram and Facebook are great for building your following and building your community and booking jobs organically. If you're doing it right and spending the time on, or having someone spend the time do it. And before we get into, we're going to do like an audit of one of your, one or two of your guys' accounts. What's the, what's the last most important thing here, Roland? Utilizing stories, that one. Utilizing stories and then also tracking your progress and seeing what's Oh yeah, working. tracking progress, that's right. <laughs> You're like, like Roland. Like, like, yeah, Roland. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> always hijacks it at the end. Never know what he's going to say next. <sighs> I know, I know. So obviously, if you're putting a lot of time, you got to make sure that you're getting the ROI. ROI. Oh, I almost screwed that up. ROI out of it. So uh, when you're in your page, you can track your insights um, to see what kind of engagement that you're getting. And obviously, you want to make sure that you're incrementally better week over week. Um, obviously, within Instagram, what you'll see is you'll see different days um, have higher engagement than other other days. Um, so you're just going to want to take a flat average across the weeks and make sure that you can monitor that growth. Um, there's tools out there that will also keep track of the growth for you, showing you how many uh, followers you've added, how many people you followed back, and those things. So it's important to track those. Um, recommendations just maybe around tools there. Later is a great tool. So later.com. Um, they've built a good um, Instagram marketing tool. Um, they can keep track of the stats there. If you're looking to get growth through it, um, a platform, kicksta.co, I'll post that as well. Um, but they will definitely monitor how many followers are growing uh, week over week, day over day. I'm going to post those both in here for you guys to, to check out. Um, but if you're not using a tool to monitor it, um, you can do it for free. You can do it in Google Sheet. Um, but make sure that you're making progress because you're being – putting a lot of time into this. Um, obviously, when you're using a tool like Later or any of the other like hoot suites of the world where you can schedule posts, that's the most efficient way to do it. We, got, we covered it earlier when we were talking. It's really important that you do this um, because you can spend you know four concentrated hours or three concentrated hours and do like a whole month's worth of posts. So you're not just ha having to think about it every single day, which is not a very effective use of your time. But you got to track it. So. Yeah, and the Instagram insights too, like that's native in the app is super powerful as well. And if you are really adamant about getting your customers to follow you on Instagram, so you know if you're putting on your business card, you're putting on your truck, you have it on your website, you can even have your live Instagram feed on your website, then you're also getting viable insights as to who your customers are. So then you're getting all this really awesome data so that you know exactly your customers are that you could later use you know, in future marketing campaigns as well. So make sure that you are letting your current customers know if you are making a new Instagram account now because you watch this live, make sure you send out maybe an email to all your customers, letting them know that you now have an Instagram and you're, you know, informing your text about it as well. Mm -hmm. And you're sharing great tips for how to maintain their home. I, that is like the keyword on everything. If you guys are considering doing newsletters, if you're asking people to follow you on Facebook or like you on Facebook, follow you on Instagram, there does have to be something in it for the person following. So don't just ask them to follow you just because you have one. Tell them what they're going to get by following you. Maybe, yeah, your Tech Tuesday, once a week you have your, your tech out in the field and they do an Instagram, they do a tech takeover on the Instagram story which Roland will talk briefly about um, Instagram stories, but that's something that they have to look forward to every week. Maybe there's, let's say you're an appliance repair company. 
um, and you are repairing, let's say, something in the oven, um, showing behind the scenes there, you guys have, I think, way more possibility for types of things you can post than you really realize. And that's why I go back to the five things. Um, you can do five or more, but five is the sweet spot um, to figure out what you want to post. So that's a great tip, Natalie. And then Roland, do you want to talk briefly about, and Natalie, both about uh, Instagram stories and your opinions on them? Sure, yeah. Uh, obviously, Instagram stole stories from Snapchat because they saw how successful it was at, at driving engagement. And um, although Snapchat does exist, um, Instagram really rode the wave of stories really well. And the reason why is because they're temporal and they disappear after a little while. What that means is that you're going to put in time and effort into something that will disappear. So it definitely is a good amount of work. That being said is Instagram's always come up with new ways to engage their audience. And one of the ways is through stickers. And so what you'll find is that they're constantly coming up with these new stickers. And what it allows you to do is show up on other people's stories, even if they're not following you yet, if you happen to be using one of these stickers, because it kind of aggregates everyone that's using those particular ones. So you want to talk about the one that recently was released, Natalie? Um, yes, so they made one that's super exciting and perfect for you, which is to support local. So you, all of you fit exactly in that category. So for me, actually, maybe I can show real quick when I open up my Instagram account. I don't know if it's doing it anymore, but sometimes the first little bubble of stories that will show me support local and it's, I don't follow them. It's just Instagram saying, like first and foremost, we're going to show you these stories. So for all the businesses that live near me and you're using those sticker, I'm like being shown all those stories. And that was absolutely free. They paid no ad dollars for that. And Instagram gave them a free boost. Yep. And um, your customers can be using this too. Everyone right now is looking for ways to support small businesses, especially ones that they know and love. Um, so knowing that you're on Instagram, if they tag you in it, they, it'll take them directly to your page to, um, if there's like an action like shop small and it takes them to your page. Yep. So when you're saying also to your customers, you know, we've taught you so, so well, always ask for a review, but now you can also ask, ask for a review and tag us on Instagram. And that's really going to help engage your customers as well. And if you ever get tagged on Instagram, make sure you repost it every single time onto your story and, and reply back to that. Um, but yeah, making sure you're engaging your audience as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good content hack because you'll find people just saying things about your business, just repost what they're doing because that way they yeah. can see that you actually took the time to like it. Um, but also it's free content for you. So why not? And hopefully they're all good. Yeah, that's it. That's a great idea. Or even if your techs are doing stuff out in the field, um, you can encourage your customers to take pictures or videos while you guys are out at their homes so you can feature them. Uh, no matter who you, I don't care who you are, everyone loves when their stories are reposted, when someone responds to their, their review. Um, just buy into that and feed into that in a positive way. So um, at the end of this, then we'll take some questions at the end. So if you have any questions, either put them in the Facebook thread, Roland is monitoring that, or put them in the Q&A here and we'll get to them. But we did want to do a bit um, like a, an audit or two of, um, of your Instagrams. And I have one pulled up right now as an example of a really good one. And you might recognize the name. Can you guys all see my screen? Yep. Okay, so this is Thompson Family Plumbing. This is, um, we had OG Plum God, John, on um, of like two months ago now. And he, this is him and his wife Devin's company. The thing that sticks out to me at the top, women owned, metal, voted best of the desert 2015 to 2020, located in California and Arizona. So they're saying where they're located. Their image here is clear and concise, and then they have their um, they have their website. So this is an example of like a really good basic one. So Roland, do you want to read me off one on Facebook, and then Natalie, you read me one off on um, on Zoom? Let's let's go to let's Triangle Cleaning Pros. Okay, so we have triangle cleaning pros pulled up here. Natalie, what's the first thing that you notice right now? Or what's your first thoughts? Um, I, 
Well, I see that they have the, their CTAs, which is good. If they have message and contact, I would be interested to know if they have the ability to book now to make it a lot easier for their customers. Um, so I would add that. I like how it says local business. Um, you're, yeah, they're saying book online, but there's not a book button here, but they do have their phone number. Um, so the th what I would uh, what I would eliminate from here is the call um, or the or the actual number on here because if someone wants to contact you they're just going to click this contact button and that's right. just real estate in your bio that you don't need what I would add here are you woman owned business family owned how long have you been in the community um, an example of an emoji that you could use here um, you can't see my mouse right now but where it says Apex Cary Chapel Hill there's a really cool like destination pin drop you guys know it's like a pin drop yeah mm -hmm. um i'll see if i can i can find it but that's a really good use of an emoji because everyone associates that with location local business is good here um i like how there's also those instagram highlights that's super important mm -hmm. roland mentioned that you put a lot of work into those stories and they only last for 24 hours so if you are saving that putting it in a highlight then that will you know make that effort last a lot longer for you Mm -hmm. Yep, there is a hack. So normally I'd say if Mother's Day has passed, put it away. But oftentimes what's, what will happen is people will actually look at those stories and go, hey, I know it's not Mother's Day, but could you do something similar? Um, and so it invokes that, that curiosity and just a direct message, which is exactly what you want. This is great. I even like how it's the same colors of their logo. Um, and they have like that pink background. Mm -hmm. This is great. Um, what I would do here, maybe differently, um, instead of it, this was posted 10 weeks ago, so really when it was all informational, but what should be here is what's specific to your company? What are you yeah. doing in terms of COVID? Once a week, posting a new update at least, I think is super beneficial. Even for me, like right now I'm trying to get a haircut. I really need a haircut and I cannot figure out which hair salons are open or not. And all of their, like I'm looking at Instagram, looking at their websites, like everyone's COVID-19 update was back in like March when it just happened. So just because you did it once doesn't mean that it was enough. Make sure that you keep updating your pros. Mm -hmm. This is a great example of including quotes and humor on your page. Cleaning while having everyone on quarantine is like trying to brush your teeth while eating Oreos. Every parent. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you can create your own like that based in your own industry and your own line of work, I think you'll see a lot of success with that. Um, okay, Natalie, what is, and also the website is right here. Um, I think it's okay to have the website there, um, you always want to have some type of link. So whether that links directly to your online booking, you can actually do a bit.ly. Natalie is a big fan of these bit.ly's because then you can track if someone books you directly from Instagram. So instead of it going directly to your page, maybe have it go to your online booking page or where they can learn more about so you can uh, track that. Yep. What's, a, what's one from a, from? Let's do Bayshore carpet cleaning. Tom Donner. Okay. So first, before we get into Tom's feed, which it looks like there's some really good stuff on here. Um, carpet cleaner, perfect. Tom knows the first thing I'm going to say is he needs to show where his location is, um, how long he's been in the community. Um, that may be a fun fact about Bayshore Carpet. An upholstery, Roland, what do you think? Yeah, I would say put the locations that you service in here because Bay Shore, there's probably a lot of places that are close to the bay. Um, and unless you know that, it might be hard to find out. And then the other thing too that um, just kind of pops out at me um, is right now your call to action is set to call, which may or may not be what you want. Um, that could be. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing too, um, as you start kind of scrolling down the feed a little bit, it seems like there's a lot of really good before and afters. Um, what I would do on this, so if you click into um, the kitchen one right there. Uh, which one? This one? The, right. Yep. This one? Yep. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so the multi-story. So this is this is very good. I feel like people don't use this enough, which is you can actually post multiple pictures to, mm -hmm. to one post. But mm -hmm. if you scroll down um, to the bottom there where it says what, what it is, it says finishing this kitchen um, today. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you make sure you respond to the person. 
Um, the other thing is, um, where did you do this kitchen? Like, what is it about? So just a little more description there other than just like, hey, we just finished this thing. Because people might not know what it's about or, or the things that you did there. So be descriptive about it. Mm -hmm. um, also make sure you tag a location to these as you're doing them. Yeah, check out this one. So this is what your company, what your um, customers see. I do this a lot when I'm interested in the name of a place. If I see a really cool picture, I'm always clicking on where it is. And what I do is I like follow that. So that's where, where Tom is or wherever this job was. And you can see the other things in that local area. So that's, this is what Roland is talking about. You'll pop up here. So yes, there's this burger joint, but then what would also pop up here, and this was from 2018, so two years ago, would be um, Bayshore Carpet Cleaners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a super powerful tool. Yeah. Um, other thing too is also um, in these posts, or yeah, also for the logo too real quick, maybe put, or yeah, for your profile picture, yeah. put the logo. Right now all we can see is free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, Obviously, that your service is, is not free. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, put, Tom, put your logo there. Um, what is this? This is the most recent picture. Finished raising raised veggie garden for our fussiest client. This is cool. Tom, I would, since you're Bayshore carpet cleaning, I would give, like, what's the story behind this? Were you helping a neighbor? Was this a, a project that you did with your kids? Like, this is what we're talking about when it's, like, posting things that are a part of you and your business. That is a great example. Um, let's see. You guys want to do a couple more? Let's do some of the Q and let's do some of the Q and A here. There's two and then, Q and A here. Yeah, if we have time, we can we can go and do some. But we um, let's go into this. I'm gonna ask uh, Bonnie's first. Hi, Bonnie. Good to see you. Um, I have a business account, but it looks like I can only have one category at a time. Is there a trick to get the five categories? So the five categories aren't actually something that you can set on Instagram. This is a part of your Instagram strategy. So you only want to be one thing on Instagram. Just I, I just showed Tom's, uh, Tom's business Instagram for Bayshore. It's carpet cleaner. So you want to choose your industry if you can on there. And what those five categories are is the five things that you're going to be posting about and rotating. So some examples for a home service company, you have before and afters, customer testimonials, you have a behind the scenes, you have um, community involvement, and you have like local partnerships. Um, those are just some ideas to get you started, but there's probably something really great about your company that makes you stick out um, apart from your competitors. You guys have probably already identified that and use that to guide what you're posting on Instagram and what those five categories are. So um, awesome. Bonnie says, hi, Alexa. Okay, got it. Perfect. Um, let's see. Natalie, can you answer Laura's? Do you have um, yeah. insight on that? Yeah, I'll read it out loud. So we use Hootsuite for our post. I should be able to just have it post to this, the same content from Facebook to Insta, right? Um, yes, absolutely. So you can um, kind of double dip on your content. So if you are posting something on Facebook or Instagram, you can have it automatically post to the other channel as well. So on Instagram, you'll have the option when you're doing a post for it to automatically post to Facebook and you'll have the same vice versa. I would say to be careful with this, um, if I'm following you on, you know, I'm following your Facebook page, why should I also follow your Instagram if you're already posting the same content? Um, I would say sometimes if you like, it's okay to do some of those double dipping, but you also want to do some unique posts as well to give that person additional value. Like, Hey, you should follow my Instagram too, not just my Facebook because we do this, these special things on here. And this is a question from Glenn Tremaine. I'm sorry if I messed up your last name on Facebook. Can you add employees to the business Instagram so they can all post when they post about cleaning job? Natalie or Roland want to take that one? So there's two ways. Go ahead, Ron. Say so there's two ways to do it. One is you can just share the account, um, but obviously you need to make sure that um, you trust your employees because you got multiple people in that account. Um, the second way to do it is if you're using one of these later tools or one of those ones, they can have a login to that, but not necessarily the Instagram account. Mm -hmm. So that way they could still be doing that. And then the third way is 
um, if you use a communication tool like Slack or just group text, um, just have them text and pictures and descriptions to one thing if you want to make that a part of the job description. Um, and then you'll just be the one that posts from there. But are there any other ways? Because I don't know if you can have so at house multiple call, in one thing here. So um, some companies have a social media manager. There's like five of us at house call. We all kind of like rotate in, taking control of our, of our Instagram. And that's something that we hope to um, start growing over the next few months. So all these things that we're telling you, we're going to apply the same to ourselves. So look out maybe for some opportunities for us to, to feature each other. Um, but yeah, Natalie and I have a login to house calls. Angela, who does all of our, um, she does all of our uh, graphics and design has a login. Cecilia, who does a lot of our content marketing, she's the one who's scheduling all that stuff out on, on later. Um, because she sends it out to different platforms too. So as long as you have, as long as you trust them, um, the only thing that could get confusing is if there's multiple conversations going on in the DMs. Like if you're talking with the customer, maybe you just set rules around that. Um, what we like to do is if we are, we are the ones responding from the house call Instagram on behalf of house call, we just do dash our name. So we know whoever was talking in the conversation, how we, and then if you have, Facebook is different. We talked about that at a different time, but there is a way to see who's using the account. Um, but we'll save that. Let's see. Any that might be Instagram 102 or 201. Yeah. Of course. We could we can do a whole we could talk about this stuff all day if you guys wanted to. Um, and we'll write the book for the home service marketing strategy. Let's see. Yeah, that was a good question, Glenn. I'm looking here. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions. If you guys want to post in the Facebook group and tag Roland, Natalie, or myself, whether it's in the coronavirus discussion or it's in the house called pros or super pros, XL pros, lady pros group right there. Um, we love answering these types of questions. And Natalie, do we have a link to the Canva templates that you made? They're um, in the coronavirus resources tab on our website. Um, we have those marketing templates. So if you search marketing templates, they should come up. We find those really quick. Um, can you quickly explain what these Canva templates are and how they can be used? Yeah, so um, Canva is a tool we talk about all the time. It basically lets you be a graphic designer without any of the knowledge. So everything's drag and drop, super simple to use. You don't need to be tech savvy at all to be able to understand how to use it. And it just allows you to have these really nice templates. So, you know, when you do want to, you know, have a post where there will be some text or you want to do a partnership and have your logo on there, or maybe you want all of your images on Instagram to have your branding on it. Um, Canva allows you to do all that. And then we've made some really awesome templates for you to go ahead and use. That way you don't have to start from scratch. You get to start from something that's already built and then you just get to change your colors, add your logo and put your pictures in it and make it yours. Yeah. So I just posted the, the blog post. It links back to the first video that we had Natalie do with us here in the beginning of all this and uh, April 1st. So this specific um, evening update that we did was using Canva for marketing and we did some Facebook stuff in here as well. So if you scroll down, there's gonna, if, once you click on that page, you're gonna see um, download free, access free templates and see examples. So I'll post it on both. Awesome. And Mike asked, will you be posting these steps? Yes. So after every single evening update, the day after our content team puts together a, a blog post, just like the one I posted on Facebook and the chat, that is just a digest of all the things we talked about with all of the links and all the steps. So that will be available to you. And then it also gets emailed out to you at the end of the week too. Christy does a quick summary of what you may have missed, um, the big things from the week. Uh, with links to those too. So that is available in the housecallpro.com slash coronavirus resources. We've done a bunch of these. We love talking about marketing for home service. It's like, it's like our thing. We love it. Um, let's see. Any last questions? Doing a live shot. My gosh, we are thinking of doing a live shot uh, of each of the projects we are on kind of before and after, what are your thoughts? 
we are big fans of the before and after. Um, I would utilize that feature that Roland talked about, what the multiple, multiple pictures on Instagram, or you can use one of Natalie's templates. And, um, and also you can add videos to Instagram too. So if you want to do like a video scan of what it looked like before and then do the video scan of what it looked like after, that's also really engaging and videos are really cool to look at in your feed. So you could still do roles, you know, adding multiple posts to one or multiple um, assets to one post, but you can make them video instead of uh, a picture. Mm -hmm. And then Roland, to kind of wrap us up, wrap us up. Um, Robert just joined us and it kind of goes into just why should I be on Instagram as a business? He says, we don't have an Instagram because I see it as thing for teens. My target audience is thirties. Am I right? I think you're wrong. Um, obviously, yes, there are many um, under 30, but um, I'm 36, so I'm on it. But also, a lot of my co-founders are on it. Um, a lot of our exec team's on it. So if you're thinking that it's only for older people, you're wrong. Um, in fact, it's probably more of an opportunity because for the people that are target audience for your business, there probably aren't a lot of your competitors using it quite yet. So be an early adopter, do yourself a favor and make sure you're always trying new things. And especially at times like these, cause now's a chance for you to leap ahead of them. So give it a shot. What do you have to lose if it doesn't work? And always make sure too. I find myself making this mistake is that just because I don't use something means that like everyone else in my demographic doesn't, but that's not always the case. So just because you don't use Instagram, and you know, you don't maybe it doesn't resonate with you. I'm not sure if this is the case for for Robert or not, but um, that doesn't necessarily apply to everyone in that demographic. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I think what we want to all leave you with is we're talking about this now because home service businesses are not on Instagram. You always want to be the first to be on different social platforms because sooner or later, just like Natalie and Roland said, you don't know who's on there until you're on and likelihood is people that will book you are going to be on there too. So yep. And if you want, if you want proof, when you go to boost an Instagram post, you can select age ranges mm -hmm. and it'll give you the estimate amount of views and the cost for it. So if you don't believe there is someone in those age ranges, um, try to go boost a post and select the age ranges that you think there aren't there. You'll see there's way more than you think. You'll be very, very surprised. Mm -hmm. Woo. I feel like every time we do these marketing ones, it's like we could talk about it for two hours, but uh, maybe we'll save the rest for Instagram marketing 102. It'll be a part of the next series of videos that we do. So we hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you, Natalie, for coming on our update and always getting conned into all the things we want you to do live with us. So we will see you guys back here tomorrow at 5 p.m. We are having Whitney Johnson on. She is a referral from, uh, from Gary Ridge, so an incredible leadership speaker. Um, but this time she's talking about personal disruption. And Roland, do you want to give a, like a quick definition of what that is? Because for me, I'm like, personal disruption, what does that mean and why does it have to do with my business? Sure. So... Obviously, your business gets better when you put it under stress. Um, you get better when you put it under stress. So, the, so the, um, the example that I like to give is when you break a bone, the break is not so nice and it hurts. But then when it heals, that bone is actually stronger than it was before because your body goes, hey, hold on. We can't break here again. Let's make it stronger. So when you're trying to personally disrupt what you're doing, you're giving yourself the chance to either relearn, retry, uh, reset, do something a different way, um, or look at it from a different point of view. So we're going to be talking all about how to get in the right mindset to do that. Um, how and why are some good uh, ways to kind of start approaching this. Um, and then at the end, the benefits of doing this. So there's a whole um, six stage arc that we're going to take you through um, mm -hmm. into this process. It's going to be really, really cool. There's going to be a good slide for you to follow along. I learned a lot when I talked to Whitney and she's a great motivational speaker. So we'll see you guys back here tomorrow at five and yeah, have a great rest of your night. We hope this was helpful. Keep an eye out for the follow-up blog post from this. If you want all those steps written out and we would love to see what you're doing on Instagram and applying it there. So feel free to post on our Facebook page, house call pros, lady pros, XL pros, super pros or coronavirus. So yes. And it's five, uh, 5 PM Pacific. 
Um, Robert said five central, so 5 p.m. Pacific. We will see you then. Thank you guys for joining us. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys.